All right, boys, since the anniversary is like a few weeks away, I feel like now is the proper time for me to go ahead and release my GSSR video. And this year's GSSR is actually pretty interesting because each of the banners are separated by year, meaning this first banner right here is all of the year one servants. And interestingly enough, it's also a really good chance for people to get story lock servants like say Bedivere over here. But then if you start looking at the other banners, this is the year two banner. These are all the year two servants. These are the year three servants, year four and year five, right? And in all reality, all of these banners are actually all pretty solid because you would think even like the year one banner, you would think, oh, it's so old. It doesn't have anybody like Merlin. It doesn't have Scotty. It doesn't have any of these like powerhouse support type servants that a lot of people are going to be going for. It just has like all of like the really good i don't want to call them basic servants right because i don't want to you know insult how good they are but they are just like those good staple servants right that you see a lot of people using for uh challenge quests or that are just generically applicable in a lot of very good situations like for instance say skahawk is on this banner who if you're fighting anyone that is undead or divine is going to chuck them into oblivion right like even even if you don't have Scotty to make her more useful for like three turn fights, because, you know, Scott can have a bit of a, you know, issue refunding her NP and stuff. Uh, she's still good for like just obliterating one person, right? And people still use her to this day. So using her as an example, this banner is still very good. And again, you do have like story lock servants like Bedivere on here uh, that are very, very hard to get and that are very, very good. I mean, truth be told, if you've been coming out to the streams, which is linked down in the description down below, I stream every weekday. We were using NP1 Bedivere in the battlefield and, you know, he did okay. He didn't, he didn't do super, super terribly, but getting NP5 is definitely a... Uh, a uh, huge improvement, we'll say at least that much. But when I'm looking at my NA that has NP5 Bedivere and my JP that only has NT, uh, MP1. But before we begin, this video is once again sponsored by Bai. And you guys know if you've been a long time viewer of the channel, these guys have sponsored us a lot because I just legitimately think it's a very, very good product. And basically all it is is that it is just like a Japanese eBay website and is a way for people like me that don't live in Japan to get access to these products that take forever to release in the West or that just never get released. And they also offer people that sign up uh, using my link down in the description down below, they offer you 2000 free yen just for registering and making an account using my link. And why that's absolutely crazy is I have pulled up, look at this like godly Tomoe figure or look at this like Master Saber, right? Uh, from that one fate thing that I have yet to read, right? But you could basically get them for almost free because they give you 2,000 yen for signing up with my account. And then you just gotta cover like the 613 yen or the 100 yen on this one, which I think is like, I think that's a couple bucks. And that is like, what, like a dollar or something? It is absolutely insane, right? It is super, super cool that like, you kind of almost get something for signing up, right? Well, like, I mean, you get the 2,000 yen, but like, you could pretty much get one of these figures, right? So if you've ever wanted like an FGO figure, you could pretty much get it if you just look for like one that is in that 2000 yen price range. And I think it's just super dope. It's a very, very good service, uh, especially for people like me, like me that have a lot of stuff that they want to buy, uh, especially that's like FGO related that they never release over here or they take forever to release over here in the West. So once again, check them out in the description down below, sign up and get your 2000 yen free today. But with all that being said, let's get back to your regularly scheduled programming. So for this GSSR, because I think all of them are legitimately valid, like I think you could pick any of the GSSRs and not be quote unquote wrong, right? Because all of them have very, very strong servants on them. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run down each of the GSSRs, talk about mainly the five star servants that are on there. If there's any like standout four star, I might mention them or just gloss over them very quickly. But obviously you're going for a banner because of the limited five stars, right? Because those are a bit harder to get than the four stars, right? But do keep in mind uh, that the four stars may play a little bit of a role in your decision because you do get one four star as well, right? Although not guaranteed to be limited as they're saying. But let's go ahead and start off with the first banner over here, the year one banner. And as I was saying earlier, this is pretty much just chock full of like generally good servants. Like pretty much any of these servants is a good pickup. Okita over here is a very, very strong um, quick DPS Saber is able to easily loop her NP. Um, she kind of was this birth servant that is being transitioned into 
like a more three turny type servant, which is good because fights are becoming more and more drawn out in FGO. And so you want to have those servants uh, that can be very, very good the longer the fight goes on. And Okita is definitely becoming that. I think maybe like one more buff away and she just becomes like one of the best sabers in the entirety of the game. Because right now she's just actually really, really solid. But with some of the newer releases that are coming out, they might be kind of stealing her thunder a little bit. But don't let that, you know, get you wrong or anything. She is still absolutely amazing. If you get Okita, even without Scotty, she's an insane pickup because she just loops like crazy she's basically just like the saber version of jack like essentially that's basically what she is a uh, nero bride this is one of the reasons i actually think it might be good to go for banner one because she functionally is a baby castoria because of her np skill right because she gives an ally a pretty hefty amount of np gain and also gives them a 30 percent battery and that basically with her attack buff gives her baby Castoria features, right? The only thing she doesn't really give is an arts buff to her allies, but the NP gain plus the battery plus the really big attack buff can allow her to substitute a, uh, a Castoria in a team comp, right? It makes her very, very good for that. So it's almost like if you roll year one and you get Nero Bride, but you don't get Castoria during the five year anniversary, it's almost like you're okay because Nero Bride will fill that role, right? It's obviously not as good as having your own Castoria, right? For your own team comps, but it will functionally kind of do the same thing. So that's why Nero Bride is a really, really good pickup if you're able to snag her. Shiki's a little bit weird. I don't think Shiki's necessarily bad. I just think that because she insta kills people, it kind of uh, messes with her niche as like a looping servant, but also she tends to kind of struggle to loop because her NP has lower hits on it. So, you know, it's just like, she's always one of those servants that people argue about whether or not she's good or not. I think she's fine. She can do some decent damage. The insta kill niche, some people look at it as like a detriment for farming. I kind of see like, well, I mean, if you need her to insta kill some like really big wave of enemies, she's kind of useful for that. It's just, you know, the difference between like, say her and say Nido Chris, who people also use for like insta kill memes, is that Nido Chris has like a million bajillion percent battery and can buff her insta kill chance. So it's just like a back and forth thing, right? I think it's mainly the battery though, because uh, Shiki also has like ways to buff her own insta kill as well. But she's okay. This is one of the more like dud servants you could get if you roll on here. I'm trying to make her sound a little bit better, but obviously like after these two, Shiki's going to fall off a little bit. Uh, Gilgamesh though, we kind of pick back up here. Literally just one of the best pickups you could probably get on this banner because he's just going to go ham taro on any servant boss you have. I pretty much bring him to fight any servant boss in the entirety of the game, at least on the NA version of the game, because, dude, that special damage mod on his NP is absolutely no joke. I mean, I think it just goes to show how good he is, the fact that, like, his kit is super basic. It's literally, like, attack buff, NP gain, 30% battery, star weight, special damage mod on NP, right? With an upgraded NP, obviously. But, like, he just absolutely goes ham with that basic kit, right? Like, he's just... Very, very simple and easy to use. You point him in the direction of a servant and you know, the meme for Gilgamesh is that he does single target damage on an AOE NP and yeah, it's definitely true. This guy definitely puts in a lot of work. So if you get Gilgamesh, he's definitely very, very good for just obliterating any and all servants. Um, Koya and Skaya compatible if that matters for you because he has a 30% battery plus 20% of pen skill. So if you do care about Koya and Skaya, Gilgamesh can farm with her, so. That's all good. Skahawk, I kind of already just talked about towards the beginning. I use her as an example, but while I'm not the biggest fan that without Scotty, it's hard for her to be good in longer fights because she kind of struggles to get her NP back because they did the weird thing with her buster hits. Even without Scotty, if you just need somebody to obliterate something on the battlefield, Skahawk is still very, very good to have. We still have very limited fights in FGO where it's like, once you break their first bar or, you know, if you can just do enough damage in this one node, right, you can clear it. People like Skahawk are still very, very good for that because if you just need a lot of damage in one turn, Skahawk is still very good for that. She also has a lot of value in being like an anchor servant, right? And what I mean by that is like, let's say you're doing a very, very hard fight. Uh, against like a specific divine or undead opponent you can just put skahawk in the back and let your whole team put in work and then if they all get obliterated by the boss skahawk can literally come in and just 
chuck her NP at them and hopefully just obliterate them. Like maybe got them down to the last bar. And if they're on their last bar, Skahog might legitimately just obliterate them off the face of the earth, right? She hits that hard, right? Especially with her upgrades coming with the uh, Skahawk Fest that should be coming after the anniversary, after Summer 5. Don't know what's going on with Oku, so probably after Oku, uh, that's probably going to come before or after the next Summer event, uh, that is when Skahawk will get her upgrade, and it is very, very good for her as well. Uh, then we have Brynhildr. Brynhildr kind of just, honestly, this is going to sound mean, but I kind of just view her as like worse Skahawk. Like she's like worse Buster Skahawk. Her damage mod is very, very good. Don't get me wrong. The Brynhildr's beloved thing is a very vast buff. And it lets uh, her cover a lot of things that may, you know, Skahawk may not cover. But honestly, kind of just view, like, I don't want to make, I don't want to be like a Debbie Downer for anybody that happens to pull Brynhildr. But I honestly feel like if you pull Brynhildr, it's almost like, ah, oh, I wish I had Skahawk, right? Because Skahawk uh, is a bit more useful, I would say, in the grand scheme of things, especially after her buff. But Brynhildr is still definitely very, very good. She has some buffs incoming that she's got over on the JP version of the game that once she gets on NA will make her a little more, I don't want to say top tier, but it will say better, right? Like she will become a more functional servant, but I think she's still a buff off from being like this true killer servant, which I am anticipating sometime soon. Maybe she'll get her buff, uh, but we'll see about that. Don't want to get anybody's hopes up. But Iskandar, Iskandar's kind of past his time, which I know is going to make some people upset. Um, but it used to always be the debate of Drake versus Iskandar, like Iskandar did more damage, but Drake had a 50% battery. And during the beginning of the game, that was a fine thing to go back and forth on people with. But now it's just batteries are so much more useful that it's, unless you're using like maximum broken K scopes, it's kind of hard to justify using Iskandar for farming. Now using him from challenge quests, this guy is an absolute killer because his first and second skills are insanely good for buffing the damage of the entire party. I mean, he gives them attack, crit, NP damage, everything, right? The whole nine yards. Um, his NP is still very, very good for dropping stars as long as you activate his third skill first because his third skill gives him a buster buff and a uh, star drop rating because his NP has like a million bajillion hits on it. He can drop a massive dookie amount of stars. So still has some use in boss fights but he's kind of fallen off a little bit for farming unless you you know have something like a maximum broken scope or something still like not the worst pickup in the world but you probably would rather get somebody else on the banner shooten doji i mean she gets a battery in the future or i think she's already gotten i'm not exactly 100 sure uh there's a lot of servants to remember but she has a battery either incoming or she's already got it right and it makes her a lot better in getting to her np but she still struggles with looping because she only has like one hit on her np but she does hit really really hard so she can still be good for like some farming situations right because she just does a lot of damage and she's an aoe assassin which is a very like niche role to fill right because like while we have a few aoe assassins in the game now it's not like we're just relying on phantom of the opera it's still like i don't know a, a niche role to fill because while we have a lot of these aoe assassins a lot of them are like aren't particularly like insane i mean because even like shooting doji but she struggles to loop because of the one hit np you have okita whose skills are nuts but they were just like what if she stunned herself on np and you're like bro i gotta deal with this and all those command codes and you know mystic codes you can bring to kind of get around that it's just very annoying to have to deal with so yeah like she's she's definitely a wonky servant not bad to pick up like she's very interesting to have in your toolbox i guess you could view that way but she's just very wonky uh mhx this is a servant that i think has had like one of the best glow ups in FGO history. After literally buffing all of her skills and her NP, you can say that she is now finally good. Uh, the work that she puts in against Sabres, while you might think that's weird as an assassin, is very, very strong. Her damage is very high against Sabres and is able to just put in work against them. And if you have a Rider boss that you need dead, she will absolutely obliterate them. She's kind of like Okita in the way that she's just like strong single target quick servant dot jpeg right just really really strong and so if you get her don't be discouraged because she is very very strong she will definitely put in a lot of work for you against rider and saber bosses kentoki not bad just kind of basic i suppose because kentoki over here um he, he's got like the bingus uh kit i would say because he literally just has a big battery big attack 
I smash, right? I mean, he has a stun on his NP, which gives him a little bit of survivability, I guess, technically. But I mean, he's still good for farming when we have like a lot of these like weird nodes. Um, he's kind of good in the same way that Skahawk is, but maybe a little bit better where you can like use him for just quick bursts of damage. If you want to put him as like an anchor, just give him any 50% start of charge CE, put Kentoki in the back. And then like once the rest of your team is like broken all of the team, uh, the enemy's break bars, you just send in Kentoki, pop an NP smash, right? Like it's pretty easy stuff to do. So he still has some uses. Um, definitely not the worst person you could get. Raikou is still very, very good. I would probably argue I like Raikou a little bit better than like someone like, say, Skondar, because they fill similar roles in the way that they're AoE buster servants that are supposed to like drop massive amounts of stars with their uh, NPs. But Raikou gets the buff on NP, the crit star generation buff, whereas uh, Iskandar gets it on his third skill, which means I kind of like her a little bit better. Because that means if you're like, say, trying to spam her NP with like a bunch of supports, you don't have to wait for the skill to come back up because it's always going to be there on any, on uh, her NP. Plus, uh, her skill upgrade, like for her skill, the, the crit star one was also really, really good. I think the only thing that we're really working on or waiting on is them to like update her um, buster buff because like for whatever reason, because I know people, okay, I'm going to pull this up because I know people aren't going to believe me because they're not going to, they're like, oh, it's Raiko, dude, of course she does. Dude, her, her, for some reason, her mana burst is only 30% when a mana burst is supposed to be 50%. Don't know why her specifically, she got the shaft, but I have no idea. But yeah, basically like all the good stuff I said about Iskandar, basically just like raise it up a little bit for Raiko. Plus she's a Zerk, so she has more general applicability, right? Because you can bring her to pretty much any fight sans foreigners. So pretty good on that front. Um, Shiro Amakusa, this is another servant that I think has one of the most insane glow ups out of like every servant. I mean, the guy just does everything. He, everybody knows about his NP. I use it as a reference anytime we have like buff remove on people. Yeah, he yeets all the enemy's buffs off before he does damage, meaning they can't, uh, unless they have unremovable buffs, they can't use solemn defense invincibility dodge stacking defense damage cut it doesn't do anything he just yeets all of it also yeets all of their offensive buff so if it's like some annoying boss that is stacking crit damage he just yeets all of that off so they can't do that anymore um i mean they gave him offensive buffs they gave him batteries they gave him refunding battery every turn they gave him the ability to gen stars every turn do you buff somebody's np gain whether it be his own or an allies like he does everything. He can stun opposing servants. He just does a whole lot. And I think the only thing that's a weakness for him is his class, right? While being a ruler is really good uh, for him being very, very tanky in boss fights, it's also kind of bad for him being able to do damage because he's just neutral against everybody, which, you know, doesn't let him be as effective as just bringing someone that's type effective that can burn through a boss a lot faster. But still definitely a very good sleeper option to get. Dante's I don't think I really need to talk about I mean literally is just premium quick looping servant dot jpeg right like if you have Scotty this guy's an absolute killer if you already have Scotty and you get an egg or you already have Dante's plus Scotty and you get extra Dante's that's also really really good you want higher NP copies anyway so I mean just looping god dot jpeg Jalter absolutely insane DPS servant still very very good to this day uh, for a year one servant, it really puts in perspective how well her kit was built. And the fact that like the only thing they did to Jalter when they buffed her on JP is they buffed her NP. So it gave her more damage. And then she drops 30 stars every time she fires her NP. So she drops 30 stars plus any stars she might gen in a brave chain, which is generally around like 15 to 25, depending on the brave chain and, you know, corresponding buffs that she may have. Um yeah then she has like pretty much 50 stars to play around with on that turn and then it's crit city and it's lights out for everyone so absolutely insane on that front um as far as four stars goes the more notable ones at least the ones that i'm kind of like eyeing out in particular are people like emia people like needle chris people like herc like herc gonna be very very good after his skill buffs uh just a very very good like solo uh survivability servant needle chris very very good for insta kill memes and her giant battery emia basically just becomes an art servant <laughs> after he gets his buff which makes him absolutely insane with castoria but there's not, not to say that the other ones are like bad right not to be like oh assault or bad servant or anything it's like no no, no. It's like she's fine it's just like those are the ones that i actually are picking up what the heck is this stuff on the side get out of here bro get out of here man there we go um and then as far as like you know the three-star ones i think you know 
Bedivere is the limited guy to go for. But that is year one. Year two, year two may, see, I was going to say like it may be the weakest in my eyes, but that might be year three. It's like year three is kind of being carried by Scotty. Because while I would say like this like has some, I don't know, because it actually, now that I'm actually more looking at it again, I was probably just focusing on people like, you know, Arthur Hijikata, right? And I was probably being like, oh, this doesn't look as strong. But then again, you have people like, Musashi, Ishtar, Merlin, you have uh, Gramps, MHX, Alter, Kiara, like Mel to Lilith. It's absolutely insane. So let's let's just talk about this. Um, Arthur, AoE, Buster, Saber with a super giant damage mod niche. Uh, if they buff his battery up a little bit or they give him some kind of other buff, he may be a bit more worth using. But right now, uh, the AoE Saber spot is kind of being dominated by Artoria right now. And then if you don't have Artoria, you're probably using Mordred. So yeah, he's kind of falling off a little bit in that competition. So they buff him like one or two more times and he'll definitely be looking solid. But right now he's kind of falling off in comparison because Artoria just does big Ooga Booga damage and uh, is like pretty much the default AoE Buster Saber to use. Uh, Musashi is just always going to be very, very good. Very, very good boss killing servant that has a very strong anti alter ego niche. Um, you know, when you run into an alter ego, it's not super often, but when you do and you have Musashi, they will be deaded in a few seconds. So, definitely very, very strong to have. Uh, Squirtoria is going to get a lot better once Castoria comes out because now she can actually do a lot more damage because uh, Castoria is going to provide her with the massive arts buff the big attack buffs especially combining uh her first skill with her np she's gonna give her even more np gain which is the one thing she didn't need but hey it'll uh it'll help her loop even it easier right so she's just gonna become a looping goddess i can do uh, much more damage with the actual proper support that castoria is going to give her so she will definitely very very uh, be very very good for those that don't know she's a single target as well so very very good for just like looping and obliterating bosses into the ground um, she also has a way to like drain enemy NP uh, on her own NP. So basically you're spamming her NP all day, every day, and you're not allowing the enemy to fire their NP at all. Uh, Ishtar is just always going to be a very, very good archer with her 50% battery, with her very, very strong AOE buster damage. She's very, very strong, compatible with the Koyanskaya meta. Very, very, very good. Probably like your premium Koyanskaya archer that you're going to want to use. So she is very strong on that front. Um, with just very, very solid buffs all around. Um, the only thing is that make sure you time that third skill correctly so you're getting that big, huge attack buff, right? Uh, Moriarty is someone that I think has slept on a little bit. With his ability to turn all allies evil, he can basically now double buff everybody with a very strong 40% charisma. With his ability to like pierce invincibility, and it's just very strong, you know, just good damage naturally. He's a very, very good boss killing servant that I think people actually kind of sleep on a little bit. So uh, if you get Gramps and you roll on this uh, year two GSSR, do not be disheartened. Gramps is actually a lot better than people give him credit for. I think people like are upset that one of his skills like required stars or whatever, but you know, he he can pretty much fund those for himself, right? It's it's not that big of a deal for him. I mean, what, what do you think that the one of the greatest mathematicians of all time would be like, I need 10 stars, but not have a, a formula to craft them for himself. Come on, man, like don't be a fool. Uh, Tamamo Lancer, very, very good against males specifically because of her anti-male special damage mod. Other than that, she doesn't really do a whole lot. Um, her kit is fine because she has like ways to give herself attack. She has ways to uh, charm the enemy to kind of stun them for a little bit. But uh, you may say it's like balanced in a way, like she's a little older. And what I mean balanced, I mean, it's that like she can charm the enemy, but then she also gives them a tick of NP which can be good or bad depending on when you use it, right? You can use it when an enemy already has full NP and then it really doesn't do anything for them because they don't overcharge themselves, right? Uh, and then it just basically functions as a charm. Uh, but then you could also say that like she has like the godly insane third skill, right? That I think uh, also like Summer Ishtar has like the insane goddess metamorphosis thing um, where she gets like 80 bajillion different buffs but then she stuns herself the next turn. Um, yeah, you could just say that she's very much a balanced servant but if you need somebody to destroy a male and specifically like a male archer then uh tamamo lancer is definitely your girl to go to because she will chuck them into the ground and kick them in the nuts <laughs> if you know shadows people that have uh, seen the np it looks painful but 
<laughs> anyway, moving on to Ilya. Ilya definitely got a lot better after she got her buff. So if you pick up Ilya now, she's going to be a little bummy. But once she gets her buffs, you're going to be very glad that you have her because she does a lot of damage. And after she gets her buffs where they're just like, screw it, give her a battery. Uh, she, she needs this battery. Why not? And then she basically just becomes one of the de facto single target casters when you need one. Uh, that is if you're not believing in uh, Sanzo supremacy, right? Like, you know, you could use Ilya, right? And sure, you might do more damage, but use the big titty monk instead, right? 80% battery uh, for a little bit less damage. But yeah, I'm just, I'm trying to shill for Sanzo right now, right? Look, we, we love Sanzo around here, but Ilya definitely is absolutely insane because of how much damage she can output and the fact that they were just like, screw it, give her a battery. Like it just, it made her bonkers. Uh, then we have Merlin over here. Merlin is always just going to be good in the way that like, if you think about it, you could pretty much put him in any team comp and he benefits just being in that team. The fact that he just gives a good attack buff, good 20% batter to everybody. The fact that he can just say nope to the enemy and pop an AOE invincibility skill for the entire party. Um, his hero creation is good for pretty much anyone sans the buster buff uh, because he still does give 100% crit damage and max HP. It's just like sometimes if you put him in like an art setup, he, they might not be able to use the buster buff right very well. Um, but his NP is still also like one of the just most generic good NPs in the entirety of the game. Just giving HP stars and NP is just one of the most ridiculous things ever. Who would have thought? And the fact that you can stack it numerous times is also really, really insane. And for people wondering, being like, what do you mean put him in like an art setup or something? There are like different stall strategies and stuff you can use Merlin for. Or there's like different um, setups for like fighting specific bosses where instead of running like double Castoria, you probably slot in another Merlin, right? And then you have like your main DPS be someone like Morgan or something or insert other stall servant here. I prefer the Merlin uh, Morgan Castoria one because then, you know, Morgan can actually make use of hero creation. And I kind of value her being able to use hero creation a little bit more than using uh, the arts buff on castoria's third skill right so but that's a debate you can have whenever you're forming your parties right obviously like i'm not here to be like which one is more valuable it, it just kind of just be prepared for those dilemmas if you're going to be using merlin outside of buster comms but he's still good outside of those buster comms right that's basically what i'm getting at right very very good if you pick up merlin a uh, da vinci over here a little bit of a wonky servant they're kind of working towards her so it's kind of like you get da vinci and it's kind of a wait and see type of thing because they clearly haven't forgotten about her they gave her a buff i would say recently on jp i suppose and i say that with quotes and it made her better but she's still not like insanely good or anything she has the pieces there to be this like bonker servant but she hasn't quite reached it yet so just keep an eye on da vinci I'm sure she'll, you know, pick up some steam in the future with another buff. Clea was like a servant that even I underrated for quite a while, but after using her more and more in uh, actual like harder content and not trying to use her for farming and everything, she's definitely gotten a whole lot better in my eyes. It's just, if you don't get that Imperial privilege, she is definitely very annoying to use because then her damage goes into the toilet, right? But as long as you get that Imperial privilege, maybe you bring Ozymandias to guarantee that she gets that buff. Maybe you bring a different servant uh, that just that gives her buff success, right? To make sure she gets that Imperial privilege. If she can get that, she will pop off. She will do good damage because then she's pretty much got everything she needs to be a very good boss killing servant. And because she's AOE, she can take care of all the goons that are around the boss as well. So very, very strong to have. And where I realized that she was better than I thought was funny enough. I think it was like last year's Memorial Quest where you fought um, Big Herc from uh, 1.5 plus Columbus, which is a Rider Berserker fight. And I was like, huh, Cleopatra is really good for this. Like she, she fits it perfectly and she just destroyed it. So yeah, definitely made me realize that she's a lot better than I thought she was. So if you get her, don't sleep on her. Gramps, still one of the best solo servants in the entirety of the game. I mean, my man over here just solos everything, right? With his like big heal, big defense, big guts that now if you proc his guts he just gets even stronger plus gets a battery he just gets absolutely insane and the fact that he also has like very good damage that he's able to do with azrael his np it just makes him a very very strong solo servant um if you get him have fun you know sending the founder in there to clap the cheeks of whoever he's fighting uh mhx alter 
This is still, in my opinion, the best single target um, quick servant in the game to have, especially after her buffs. With her buffs, she just keeps getting better. The fact that now she has an anti-good niche is just absolutely insane on top of everything else she does. Um, she doesn't have any form of survivability, but her form of survivability is three turning everything, right? The fact that she's a Zerk means you can bring her to any fight in the game. Saiyan is a foreigner, uh, but that's very, very rare uh, for her to be like up against something like that. And yeah, she will pretty much obliterate whoever she's fighting. I mean, her damage is exceptionally high. She's able to three tier things very, very effectively. If you get her, uh, try to get yourself a Scotty somehow and just have her tear people apart. Hijikata is not as bad as everybody thinks, but not as good as people try to build him up to be. You have a lot of hipsters in the FGO community trying to be like, yo, Hijikata actually not even that bad. And I'm like, I mean, he, he's fine. He's decent. If you get him, though, you're definitely sad. Like, if you get Hijikata over, like, Musashi, Merlin, even, like, Ilya because of her future buffs, Ishtar, or these two even, you're definitely molding, right? Because you got Hijikata. Definitely... You don't want to see Berserker pop up uh, on this unless you're getting MHX Alter, obviously. But if you see if you see Berserker, you're probably gonna have a heart attack because you're like, well, please, please, MHX Alter, not Hijikata. Like, he, he's not the worst. He can he can do some damage. He's he's like fine, but you definitely don't want to see him, right? Like, I feel like that's the best advertisement I could give for Hijikata. But um, then we have Kiara. If you've been tuning into the streams, you guys know that Kiara pretty much soloed all of Trom for me. She pretty much just absolutely obliterated that entire, I guess, boss belt chapter is what we'll call it. Uh, she is still just absolutely sick, nasty with the sauce, uh, with all the things that she does. Now, keep in mind, my Kiara on JP is NP3. Uh, because of the most recent gssr but that being said i can definitely tell you that if you already have kiara and you roll on this banner and you get a higher np copy it makes a world of a difference it makes her way more insane and funny enough i discovered that she can actually loop with castoria who would have thought that kiara is capable of looping um so yeah she's now infinitely better because she can loop and farm and she's an insane boss killing servant so if nothing else you can roll on this for Kiara because she is goaded with the sauce. I cannot say that enough. Uh, and then Melta Lilith uh, kind of feels bad coming off of Kiara's heels, but she is still, again, one of the better single target quick servants in the game, kind of in the same vein as like Okita. They do kind of like the same thing where even before Scotty, they were able to loop with their quick cards, right? Because they generated so many stars that they would get consistent crits on their quick cards and they could actually loop very, very easily. Um, the only downside, I guess, for Melta Lilith is that uh, the effects on our NP don't proc first, the buff removal and the quick removal, but there's still very, very good effects for her to have. So not a whole lot of complaints here for me. Now, year three, this might be the most bait one for people to summon on because, I mean, if we just go through this, like Sigurd's not really super great. Sherlock, I think... Like, if he just drops stars on his NP, he'll definitely be way, way better. People will recognize how good he is. Even after his buff, though, on the JP version of the game, I still think that's what he's waiting on to become insanely busted. Because now he's, like, really solid. But give him, like, 25, 30 stars that he drops every time he fires his NP, and he'll definitely be, like, a huge threat. Then you have people like... Ivan is okay, gets his buff in the future on JP when we get the road to Lost Belt at 7. Then he becomes pretty good, right? But that's a that's a ways off. Right now, he's just like a solid AoE rider choice for like boss fights. Semiramis, very like solid assassin that you could bring. Uh, compatible with Koyan Sky, because let me double check, because I believe she has a 30% battery. It is 30%. So yeah, she is compatible with Koyan Skaya. For some reason, I thought it might be 40%, like a uh, Ruler Artoria. I was thinking it was like one of those weird servants, but you know, like Okita Alter, not a bad servant, just like a little underwhelming at times. Same thing could be said for someone like Abigail. Like, I hope you guys are kind of getting the vibes for like the year three. Like year three is like more of a like bait go for Scotty because Scotty is like one of the main servants here that is like, this is an exceptionally powerful servant. Ereshkigal, after her buff, 
is insanely good, right? Like she is able to, uh, especially with Koya and Skaya, pretty much loop against most things, right? Uh, because of her new special damage mod she gets, she's even like able to loop through sabers, right? Which is absolutely insane. So a rush all becomes insane. Rider uh, made alter, right? Is a little contentious, right? Because with Scotty, she is absolutely dummy nutty broken. But if you don't have Scotty, she kind of struggles in the same way that Skahog does, where she has a hard time refunding her NP, right? I mean, Nero cast are very, very good compatible with Koya and Skaya. This is definitely like one of the uh, better servants you could get as well. Uh, Hokusai is definitely a wonky servant to use, but it's definitely, you know, I would say worth using because the payoff, I think, is a very fun gameplay and she can put in a lot of work. But I mean, you guys know that the year three is literally just you're going for Scotty or bust. I mean, it's very based if you're going for a Reshkigal or like Nero caster here. But let me be honest, like if you're going for this banner, it's because you want Scotty, right? Like that is the main reason you're summoning on this banner. And honestly, it's it's almost like debatable if it's even worth because the chance for getting Scotty is so low. It's like one in however many servants this is when like i understand why people are going for year one or year two right especially like year one and uh especially because it's like the bust part like the like you got shafted is kind of low because i guess you could say like shafts are like cheeky saber maybe like iskandar brin and chutin doji but everyone else is like really really solid they're very good maybe dante's is a shaft if you don't have scotty like maybe that's why as well but it's like this one it just feels like if you don't get scotty you're gonna be disappointed because you're going specifically for her the only way to not get like disappointed and like shafted is that like you don't get scotty and maybe get like a rush goal right but like i feel like even if you get nero uh caster you're gonna be disappointed and here's why because you're gonna see the caster pull up you're gonna think it's scotty and then it's going to be nero bright and then i feel like even though nero bright is really good and is definitely not a shaft you're then still going to be disappointed so i'm not too sure about the year three one the year three one is kind of the ones that i'm a little iffy on because it just it just doesn't look like a good idea it just kind of looks like being set up for disappointment right because i feel like again you don't get scotty you're just gonna be very very sad year four is where we pick back up though year four this is definitely one that people are doing something very similar where they are summoning instead of scotty they're summoning for arjuna altar but this one actually has like really, really powerhouse servants on it. You don't have kind of like duds like Sigurd on there, right? So you have like Benny Enma, right? Benny Enma is pretty much going to be if you're not using uh, the free to play, uh, free to play, free to play Hokusai Saber, you're going to be using Benny Enma over here, who is just absolutely uh, insane with double cast Toria and her ability to kind of like loop her NP and output very, very good damage, uh, especially with like her little special damage mods and everything. It just makes Venny Enma one of the better single target sabers to use with Castoria. I mean, Jean Archer over here just loops like an absolute god. Although, uh, uh, Zenobia will be coming out soon. And Zenobia also loops pretty well at NP1 as I've been testing over on stream. She just does absolutely insane as well. So, if you don't get Jean Archer here, because, you know, she's a very good condolence prize to get if you don't get Arjuna Altar. Uh, don't worry, Zenobia also can loot very, very well with Castoria. But if you get her and you get Castoria, you're pretty much set. This is literally just Waver, but a Rider. So it's like, this is the one banner that's like, oh yeah, by the way, we have an insane support type servant. Literally Waver, her buff is out. You can literally get yourself a Waver right here. So again, you don't get Arjuna Altar, bam, you got Waver right there. Um, Murasaki, also very insane, can loop her NP. Uh, does really good damage, has good special damage mods that she can also give to the party. It's like, she also very, very insane. Kama, I don't know if I need to even talk about, do I need to explain why Kama is good? Do I need to explain why Arjuna Alter is good? Do I need to explain why Chi Shi Huang is good? Like, do you see what I mean, by the way? Like, when it's like, oh, this banner is kind of like, uh, get, get Scotty or bust. This has like three insane servants that I'm like, do I even need to say what they do? This is like, sans scotty like without scotty she is absolutely insane as a dps like i don't even have scotty and i use her on edit and she just kicks butt and takes names right has an insane alter ego gimmick and like charm log people as big battery does the big damage i mean she like has a guts for survivability double buffs herself stacks quick buffs on her np like she just does everything dude arjuna alter 
bro, it's it's RG, like he punches people insanely hard. Like you click red, the enemy is dead. <laughs> like it, I don't need to talk about him. And then this is just like the best solo servant in the game, right? Like there ain't nothing that Chad Shi Shi Huang can't solo. And then, I mean, what? Avenger Nobu is like your disappointing servant that you get on the banner. I mean, if if this is your shaft unit, if this is your shaft, right? Then like, I think you're doing just fine. Like if your shaft includes an Avenger that is built with like their own special damage mod, they have a stacking attack buff, they get a battery, they get stars, they get, I mean, this is fine, right? Like this is pretty good. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> this is the buff that she'll get in the future, right? Where they're just like, okay, let's let's make her Koyan Sky compatible, right? Let's give her the 30%. And then has this like insane anti-divine niche where she like she really just blows the back out of divine servants if this is your shaft i think this is a very solid banner because then look you have summer bb and summer bb just got a buff on jp so people are finally starting to realize how absolutely insane she is i just did a video on her and i think she's absolutely cracked so it's kind of like she's good now in the future it becomes dummy insane and then King Protea also is capable of doing like dummy amounts of damage as uh, with her new buff. If you guys aren't familiar, let me show you. Uh, she now uh, stacks NP damage on her third skill on the JP version of the game. So as her um, her growth thing goes, when you do this for those three turns, she also stacks NP damage as well, which just gets really dummy insane, right? It just gets really ridiculous. Um, although I think I misinterpreted it when i may have misinterpreted it when i was uh first doing it the first time but yeah still insane regardless so yeah banner four might be the one that's like if you just want just a good servant it's something you go for but then again so is banner five like who would have thought that four and five would be like the best ones to go for because they just have like the most modern like good servants now i feel like this is really the debate to have because while astolfo saber is fine like i don't think he's uh like bad or anything i honestly feel like if you have okita you might use okita instead of a stolfo saber honestly that might be something you do say is definitely very very strong uh with uh the girl scotty if you uh have scotty uh because say just has like what three special damage mods and they're all like very very you know just broadly reaching special damage mods but how can i talk about both of these two when super orion's on the banner and I mean, if Arjuna is big, click red cards and people die. Orion is just like, click any card with star, enemy dead. Click stars, send them to Mars, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, you just obliterate those people, all right? Like, he's absolutely dummy insane if you pick him up. You don't really need to support him with anything. He's very good for soloing things. You can just plop him down in there and let him at least get two NPs up. And he will pretty much clap anything in the entire game with his bare hands uh this guy just allows all kinds of disgusting things like while i think romulus is like really good on his own i think it's like the different setups and everything that you can do with him that give him that insane value because i'll always just mention that you can do this insane combo right like let's say you're fighting dragons you bring romulus you bring sigurd you bring Boudica. you have Boudica make everybody get a special damage mod against romans you pop siegfried's buff right or sigurd's buff right uh, where they have like uh damage mod against dragons actually no i think no i think it has to be siegfried uh you bring siegfried right and then you have uh romulus turn everybody roman and then siegfried just does like three million damage or something like he just like claps cheeks like the fact that you can like allow that kind of disgustingness right and the fact that he makes Boudica more viable i think are just two things that uh put this guy on a bit of a pedestal these two are just looping gods with castoria if there's any reason to go for this banner it's the fact that like these two will plus place ishtar over here like let's just put it right here these three are all like you get castoria and then any of these three are just gonna put in stupid dummy amount of work i mean she loops insanely well she loops insanely well she's pretty much the best servant to use with castoria right all three of them are just dummy insane right if you want to have like a good meta read and you're like, oh, I'm trying to prep myself for Castoria, boom, boom, boom. Any of these three are absolutely insane. Uh, Ruler Artoria, I'm trying to show on stream, is 
better than people think. I've been using her during the CCC refund over on stream. A refund rerun. Jeez, I can't talk. What it's only been, how long is it? It's only been 40 minutes. You think after 40 minutes, I'd still be able to, you know, keep on talking normally. But anyway, <laughs> Ruler Artori is definitely better than people think she is. Um, it's just like, I think people are a little on put on the things that like, she has like a weird 40% battery, right? And I think that may be like off putting to some people, but like, dude, come on, dude. It's basically a 50% battery. Just, 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 just give her like level five, a pen skill, bada boom, bada bing. There you go. She's got a 50% battery. There you go. If people are like, but I can't use 50% CEs, it's like, just, just level five a pen skill her and you're all good to go. Because other than that, everything that she does is absolutely insane. Very strong attack buffs. Uh, very strong that she can like give herself the Omni card buff. Really good that she can kick an enemy out of the card rotation for a turn. Because I've been using that in like, say a waiver Ruler Artoria Merlin build. That'll be like, oh, I don't want to see any of Waver's cards right now. I'll do the shuffle target waiver and kick him out of the rotation right so then i pretty much guaranteed get all my uh ruler artoria cards back and it's just it's really dummy crazy like it's so stupid it's so insane that she can do stuff like that um the fact that she can also like give crit damage as well like she just pretty much does it all like if you just need like a really good aoe servant it's her right and if you need someone that can do some good crit damage it's also her now obviously doesn't really compare to someone like super orion when it comes to doing crits but i mean i was gonna say she's got big titties but so does super orion but in a different way you know what i'm saying but um <laughs> voyager over here very good with uh scotty if you do not have dante's he's kind of like an alternative pick to go for and then yang is just a very very good uh single target like just obliterate and eviscerate the bosses as quickly as possible just the fact that all you gotta do is burn somebody and then yang just puts an absolute insane amounts of work it actually gives a lot of value to those command codes that actually um like whenever you attack you burn somebody right so it means like oh if you're gonna do like specific yang setups you can give your castoria the command codes that do burn damage as soon as she attacks and then like you can do like castoria attacks then yang NPs to guarantee the burn on them if like your living flame buff or something is down like you know you can do stuff like that which i think is really funny but with all that being said i think i have pretty much covered mostly all of the five star servants obviously like uh as far as like four stars go melt lilith is like a very good grab on this year these are kind of just like all good like xx is really really strong landling is very good he's kind of like a cast skill but a saber I mean, you've also got mm, this one. I mean, Parvati's really good. Let me not disrespect Parvati. Parvati's insane. Cersei actually has some use with the fact that she has a very, very large battery. Um, I mean, look, Ryder Morty is on here as well. And Mordred is an absolute looping goddess as well. So if you go for year two and you get her as your uh, your four-star servant, then uh, you're going to be kind of set on Castoria. So keep that in mind as well. But for the most part, there's not like too many like, you gotta go for this four-star. It's kind of like... If you see a four star, that's one that I haven't mentioned that you're like, oh, I really want Saber Frankenstein. Then maybe that might influence you going for uh, the third year lucky bag. But yeah, as far as things are concerned, I think these are just the strongest ones to go for. I mean, who would have thought the most recent banners with the most recent meta units are the better ones to go for. Then probably like year one, then year two, then on it. Like even with Scotty being on this, it just seems like it, it seems like a trap, right? With Castoria coming out, like, I would see, go see if you get Castoria, go summon for her. If you get Castoria, you don't need Scott. You're not as desperate for Scotty. You can wait for her to come back, which she does come back, I think, like, what, next year or something? Um, for NA, I believe it's next year, something along those lines. It's like a year, a year and a half, something like that. And so if you get Castoria, you're not as desperate for Scotty. So then maybe see if you can get, like, one of these other units right like maybe you get castori maybe go on this banner right and see if you can, can't get like space ishtar musashi right at least a uh, rider da vinci right uh because going for scotty i know people are like very very desperate because it's like oh i don't i want to have like a meta like support type serving but if you can get castoria you can wait till scotty has a single raid up and use your gssr for someone else that you want right you can actually exchange for a different servant right in which case i think if you just need a good servant uh, year four is probably the best one if you just need any just good servant but if you're specifically fishing for like uh castoria or you know also just quote unquote good servants this is a good one to go as well but this is more castoria focused and i feel like this is just more like 
good focus right if that makes sense like this is a little bit of a special arc to it this one is more like flat just good servants right if that makes sense if i haven't confused anybody with that but with all that being said i'm gonna go ahead and get out of here your boy's voice is absolutely dead i woke up giga early because i thought uh jp was gonna drop something but it's some dog event that i'll talk about later but yeah with all that being said boys i'm gonna go ahead and get out of here uh you guys have yourselves a nice day make sure you like subscribe all that good jazz and i'm gone peace late guys